and welcome to this ESS IB revision video with Mr. Phillips and today we are going to be looking at um, use of 4.3 aquatic food productions and we're going to be looking at the productivity uh, particularly the ocean to start off with but generally looking at fish production uh, for human. So you need to understand that if you have in an ecosystem a high biodiversity there, that means that there's a high stability and a high resilience. So if you've got 100 species and one of them goes extinct, there is still 99% of the species there. However, if you've only got 10 species and one of those goes extinct, you've lost 10% of the species. So with a higher biodiversity, this leads to a higher stability and this leads to a higher resilience as a result. So some areas in the sea, because we're talking about marines, are more um, productive than others. And this map, pretty, this picture pretty much shows you the key areas you need to know. So 50% of productivity in the sea is done above the continental shelf. Um, deep areas have a lower uh, productivity because the deep areas, there'll be no light. And therefore, these areas only rely on something called chemo autotrophs, which use chemical energy from um, deep sea vents to produce um, productivity, produce biomass. So you have very low productivity at the So this links directly to something called the continental shelf. And the continental shelf is an extension of the continent underneath the sea, creating a layer of shallow water. Um, and this productivity, this 50% of productivity in the oceans, occurs in only 15% of the area of the oceans. So the continental shelves equal effectively 15% of the oceans. And why they are so um, so rich in life is because of the ocean currents. So if you remember we talked about it before in a previous video that the ocean currents have upwellings. So nutrients will be pushed up towards the continental shelf as they hit the, um, the continental slope and pushes nutrients up, making it very rich. Also, the light um, from the sun can reach the continental shelf. And as a result, the, um, the plants and the, can do photosynthesis, the algae can do photosynthesis, and that means that you get a high level of productivity. Now, obviously, as a result of this, Countries want to ex exploit that um, because there's lots of fish there, if there's lots of animal life there, they want to harvest that. And effectively, the rule is that the country that is next to that continental shelf owns that bit of sea. So here you can see the continental shelf around, the Great, around Great Britain um, and the continental shelf and how it's linked to the fishes. So the continental shelf um, is up to eight kilometers, 80 kilometers wide around countries. It belongs to the country which it extends from. Um, 200 miles out to sea, it becomes international water. Um, and that obviously impacts ownership, impacts therefore explo exploitation rights, but also away from the land where there's no one particularly owns it and it's international water, it can cause problems because if there's a pollution problem, it then should be a joint venture to clean that up. So I said before, continental shelf is the most productive area. And the reason it's the most productive area is because there's more light. Therefore, there's more photosynthesis and therefore plants have a higher level of productivity. Um, and this is obviously impacting things like fishing, etc. But fishing is a particular area of concern because of its lack of sustainability. So fisheries include fish that are harvested in any sort of way. So it doesn't just mean um, fisheries in artificial environments. It can be wild fish, it can be aquaculture, and it can be uh, fish farming. And basically, um, fishing in terms of what's done around the world, 90% of it is in marine habitats, 10% of the fisheries are in um, fresh water. Um, half a billion people around the world make a living link to the fishery industry. So it's a huge, huge industry and it's really important in terms of diet as well, because three billion people gain 20% of their protein from fish and the rest of the world get about 15%. Fish is really good for us because it is high in protein and it is low in saturated fats. 
and it contains vitamins that are also needed for a healthy diet. However, the problem is 70% of fisheries are at their limit, they're in decline, or they are um, have too low a numbers to actually recover, even if we stopped fishing as a result. And we know this is a case because even with better technology, we are not getting increased catches now. So you can see here the um, fisheries, um, i.e. when you go and fish, capture fish, the numbers went up as technology went up in the 70s and 80s. But then as we got to sort of the, the turn of the century, the levels have leveled off. And for the first time in recent years, there are now more fish being produced in aquaculture than being caught in the wild. So looking at this then, what can we do? Well, what the point of this is actually is that um, sort of medium economically developed countries are becoming healthier and one of the reasons they're becoming healthier is because we're eating less meat you can see here the level of meat production has sort of started to level off and fish production or fish consumption i should say has increased above um, the level of meat production so more vegetables and fish are being consumed in the developed world compared to previously now, that is good because people are eating less um, saturated fats, um, but there is that extra pressure on the fish uh, fisheries as a result. So the average person now eats 20 kilograms of fish and 8 kilograms of meat per year, whereas in the past that would have definitely been the opposite way around. Now, this is obviously causing huge, huge stress because of the amount of fish that is being eaten. Fish is being eaten more than meat. We now um, have to use fish farms more than catch because the catch isn't um, is working. And this needs to be made more sustainable if we want to maintain it into the future. So how can we make fish farms more sustainable? How can we change it so we are able to eat fish in the future? Well, fish meals, um, i.e. what they feed the fish, um, can be used, which use more trimmings and scraps that would normally be be wasted. Fish are not picky eaters and therefore there is alternative ways of getting protein into those fish. Livestock and poultry waste can be used as food and whether that's um, from farms and also the US Department of Agriculture has actually proven that eight species of carnivorous fish will eat other sources of protein are not fish so it doesn't have to be fish being used to feed fish as it was originally for. China is um, one of the biggest countries that produce aquaculture and again that isn't to say it is China's fault because people all around the world feed in the aquaculture um, mainly using carp or catfish they, choose, they produce 62% of all farmed fish. Um, they are trying to do some different mechanisms and one which is more um, environmentally friendly is actually growing the fish in rice paddy fields um, and that then helps the rice grow as well. So you can see that in this diagram here, you've got the rice plants and you've got the fish growing in there. The fields already have to be flooded because that's how rice plants grow. The fish um, can survive and eat in there, but also they produce waste, which then the rice uses to grow as a fertilizer. Shrimp and salmon um, are particularly inefficient agriculture methods. They are fed on fish meal or fish oil, um, and where they were uh, being grown, they've basically ripped out mangrove swamps in order to do this. So this is a really inefficient place because mangroves are essential in um, preventing things like flooding, in cleaning the water, um, and particularly in flooding um, and fighting the impacts of climate change and storm surges. So this is causing habitat loss, it's causing pollutants um, into the water from where they're growing, feeding them, using antibiotics and medicines of the fish to increase growth. Disease is being spread and it's really easy to spread through the water into the outer environment as well. And genetically modified species are escaping and breeding. And when they do escape, they're outcompeting the native species. So it is a significant problem and it is about inefficiency. Wild fishing is also extremely um, 
um, sustainable. 75% of fish stocks, um, wild fish stocks worldwide, are now at limits or being overexploited. And the reason this is happening is because effectively we are too good at fishing. And you can see it's definitely happening because the leveling off again effect is happening because we're so good at fishing, we can't get any better and there's no extra fish to catch. So why are we so good? Because now we use GPS to locate the fish. We've got larger fishing fleets with better freezing. And that's important because that means instead of going back to land as late once a week, they can now spend two or three weeks, freeze the fish immediately, and then go back to, to the land with bigger catches so we can spend longer at sea. We've got indiscriminate fishing methods, so we'll throw nets overboard which catch everything, and that means things we don't need to uh, want to catch as well called bycatch. Um, we're clear cutting seabeds, so some trawlers just drag nets across the bottom of the seabed, destroying the habitat as well as catching the fish, um, and that can be a big, big issue. And you can see more and more there is conflict developing in countries because there is depleted raw resources that countries are competing. So what happens to the fish? Well, only 15% of the fish caught actually is um, consumed directly by humans. About 25-30% is being used for fish meals in aquaculture, i.e. feeding the fish as this man's throwing into the, the aquaculture there. Um, and also basically 50% is lost as bycatch, which means it is effectively discarded and thrown away. And that's because we're not careful on what we catch. We take everything out and then just use the fish we want. Now this is leading to something called the tragedy of the commons. And the tragedy of the commons is when there is a resource that people think is common to everyone, like common land. Therefore, everyone exploits it and it becomes over-exploited. And cod is a very good example of this. Cod, which would have been found in the whole of Northern Atlantic earlier on this century, is now under critical, is critically endangered. Now, how do we try and govern this is one of the problems, why it's so unsustainable. So the United Nations have a convention on the laws of the sea. And the first bit is there are internal waters. These are next to the country's coastlines and only the country's own ships can use these waters and ships can't even travel through this. And the rules and regulations are regulated by this, this con these countries. The next stage um, is the next 12 nautical miles is territorial waters and ships from foreign countries can travel through these but not to spy, fish or pollute. Um, and if it's an island, it's around, if there's an island chain, it's around the whole archipelago as a result. Next 12 nautical miles are, contig um, are a contiguous zone and this means that state can control and stop illegal immigration or activities there, um, but fishing is allowed. And then you have an exclusive economic zone um, where the state has the right um, to exploit all the natural resources, but nations from foreign countries can go through um, and high seas. So then the last part is, well, what can we do something called maximum sustainable yield? So this is the idea that you can increase in natural character to be exploited without depleting the original stock. So we can catch, if you increase your catch and increase the effort of your catch to a certain point, your yield will increase. And when it gets to its maximum, that is the maximum sustainable yield. So it's how much you can remove without permanently depleting that resource. And it means that you're making money as a result. And the fisheries, um, it's basically how much they can take or the size of the take they can do with next year's. Now this will link to something called the carrying capacity, which is the um, amount the environment can contain. And, it do, and the carrying capacity of a population links to its reproductive strategy, its longevity, or how long it lives, and the resources in that ecosystem. And once you go past the um, maximum yield, the population will start to collapse and therefore you get overfishing and then eventually extinction due to but the idea of this sometimes has led to problems because this many people feel that if you do fish at this level you will get um, the most catch with no damage but that isn't true normally when fishing happens in the maximum sustainable yield area the population still drops and the reason for this 
is because population, population dynamics are normally predicted using um, a model. And as you should know from module one, a model is a simplified system. So it's difficult to actually calculate the precise um, size of um, populations. And therefore, that can often be wrong because our estimates are based on previous experiences. And things like climate change will not be taken into account to link like that. It's difficult to model age and sex ratio. Different fish have different ages of maturity, and that can be affected by stuff like depth that they live in, and that can be really difficult to model. Disease will never be counted for either, so if a new disease comes along, all of a sudden that might suddenly drop and your um, sustainable yield might be a lot lower, but you may not realise it. Pollution again could do the same thing, and therefore often maximum sustainable yield actually leads to a decline um, as a result. And it also it drops in certain years and goes up in certain years depending on reproductive seasons. So what we have to look at then is something, if we want to make this sustainable, it's called the optimal sustainable yield. And this is the idea that we need to do it a bit lower. We need to be doing less effort. Um, we need to be doing it lower. So somewhere sort of like here would be good, maybe here, I suppose. And this leads to optimal sustainable yield. This would then be result be created by fishing quotas. Um, but it can actually help fishing because it means less, less efforts needed and also therefore there'll be less cost as a result. And all of these things that we've talked about here, why fishing isn't sustainable and how we can make it sustainable, we haven't mentioned at a single point climate change. And obviously all these factors affecting climate change can also affect aquaculture. So fishing is no different because the, um, the, the currents are changing and there's other impacts which are potentially going to cause the maximum sustainable yields to drop further.